Welcome back everyone. Uh, so three weeks ago I made a video and I told you a little bit about what my career and my financial goals are. And I promised that in three more weeks I'd expand on that and I'd tell you why I want to be an entrepreneur. So that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. And if you stick toward the end I'm going to give you some examples of some ways that I've already been an entrepreneur um, on a small scale um, so far uh, in my life even though I'm pretty early in the plan. So. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of background. Um, I'm 31 years old, I'm turning 32 this year, and I've worked for 17 years of my life. I started working when I was 15, and I've had a ton of experience in different industries, worked for all kinds of employers in different areas. So that factors in later when I get to talking about employment, work-life balance, and, and how, um, how employ employers treat you. So, when I say I want to be an entrepreneur, what I mean is that I want to own and manage businesses. Now, specifically, mine's going to be real estate with some other things mixed into it. But regardless of how you become an entrepreneur, the the lifestyle that it it provides for you is the same. Um, I spoke about that in my last video, which is basically just a uh, a more free, fluid, open lifestyle. I'm going to have some passive income, um, and I'm going to be able to go back to grad school without having to worry about working through school like I did in undergrad. But my point in all of this is that um, I'm looking for something better than what is just being given to me. I'm looking for a situation where I'm not trading a small hourly wage for an hour of my life and that I'm not working to make someone else rich, and that I'm not, at the end of the day, not building anything for myself. What I want to do is to create a business of my own, whether it be a business in the legal definition or whether it just be an operation that makes me, or allows me to earn a living. So if we jump back um, to my past, I grew up with my dad owning rental properties. He was an awful landlord. Um, but I do vaguely remember, and that's probably my earliest memory of working in that industry, the industry that I work in now. Um, and then if you fast forward to, oh, let's say 2003, 2004, um, I was about a year out of high school, and I had a job, and I had a full-time uh, volunteer job and then I worked part-time because that was the only thing I could find and I wasn't making ends meet at all and I was getting really desperate for work in the slow period and I remember that I I came up with this idea I was living out in my old high school school district which is this really rural area and our fight song in high school was Warriors We and I remember coming up with this desperate scheme with uh, a friend of mine from high school and we wanted to come up with a 10 cent it was going to cost 10 cents uh, publication like one or two pages that we'd get sold at local stores um, called Warriors Weekly that was going to be information about the school district what was going on in the school and that western part of the county that was not paid very much attention by the other surrounding newspapers um, it never took off because I didn't have the money to start it and my buddy didn't want to get involved until it took off and I'm like well I need your help and so it never really happened now fast forward to 2009 and I'm in college and again I can't find a job because it's the area that I'm living in can't find anything literally even part-time fast food so I decide well and I thought that I had found like this magical, magical solution uh, to poverty, <laughs> to my poverty, and you know. Um, what I did is, if you go a year back to 2008, um, I had bought this ebook online, and it was one that's heavily marketed, and it costs like $30. Well, back in 2008, I don't even know if there were online copy of the right laws. If there were, I couldn't find them on Google and they certainly weren't enforced. I truly didn't believe at the time that I was doing anything wrong. Turns out it probably was illegal, but I didn't actually know that. 
So what it was is, at the time, I was running um, an eBay uh, store, and I was flipping items, which I'll get to that. Um, but what I was doing, and what became my primary business, is I started selling this ebook for $15, half the price it is on the website. So I didn't have to do any marketing for it. They were doing the marketing. The people saw it was $30 on their site. It was $15 to buy it off eBay. I would get one, two, three orders a day. So yeah, 15, 30, or yeah, 15, 30, or 45 dollars a day. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it was enough that I could eat. And at that point, that was my main objective. And I saw how easy and how successful. Um, and how profitable that business was. Uh, and I think that was my first real experience. Now that went on for nine months or a year. They did finally, eBay changed the rules where you can't sell eBooks, so that pretty much put me out of business. It gave me experience dealing with competitors that would drive my price down, um, and, uh, other things like that, but I'm alive today because I was selling that book. Um, now at the same time that that was happening, my landlord was really desperate for money, and he did a lot of things like cleaning out houses, odd construction, demolition jobs. Um, he would often, when he got cleaned out houses, he would scrap some items, he would flip things, and that's where some of the stuff came from that I flipped on eBay. I started selling for like a partial commission or like a percentage. I was using my eBay account to sell things for him, and it was really these really odd jobs and cobbling a bunch of things together in order to make an income off of it. Including, he went to jail for a DUI, and while he was in jail, like, I got free rent because I was collecting the rent from everybody else, managing the house, paying the utilities. So it was, I guess, being put in that situation where I had this lack of, um, opportunity to find even the most simple job made me very desperate to where I had to be very creative in order to um, get by. And if you've read Rich Dad Poor Dad by Richard Kiyosaki, that's one of the things that he talks about um, that that is something that's essential for you to understand money and to be creative with how to make it is that you have to have been in desperate straits because that desperation brings out creativity and I that's always stuck with me from that book so that was 2008 2009 and 2010 and from 2010 to well 2012 when I graduated college I worked a regular job I worked at AT&T and then got a job at Abercrombie graduated college and it was about six months into working at Abercrombie that I, I just realized that I was not me making ends meet at all and was not going to be able to make my loan payments. So I had to decide what I was going to do. And I again started thinking of these, um, these like schemes, right? Not illegal things, but creative things of how to make money. One of the things I actually thought of is I was subleasing a room in Morgantown off somebody I'd found in Craigslist. And I was like, it was a four bedroom apartment. I'm like, what if I just like rented the whole apartment in my name and then rented out the rooms, like I would manage it, I'd rent out the rooms to other people for a little bit higher price than what I'm paying for it and I'd have a little bit of profit coming in. That didn't end up happening because of some of the legalities sur surrounding it. But again, I'm still getting these ideas of making money. Well. So now from 2000, oh, man, I just realized how old I am. Uh, okay, so from 2012 to 2017, I have been in the workforce. It's not permanent. I lose sight of it from time to time, but I had to leave college when I did because my loans were coming due. I had to start working to pay them off. But once I get a few paid off and get a passive income coming in, I'm still going back to grad school and going for actual professional training. Um, my my issue, I guess, um, with this is that since in the last five years while I've been working, as you guys know from all my videos that I've been posting about my terrible employment experiences, I have had a lot of problems with employers. 
the way they treat me, the way they talk to me, working 70 hours a week, so no work-life balance, um, the stress that it causes, and also that, uh, you know, the whole I missed out on my whole childhood thing and have never really got to just explore who I am. Um, there are a lot of different issues like that that are going into this that really have all brought me to the same point, and that is that I am dead set that I'm going to be an entrepreneur and that I am going to create a business focused mostly on real estate, but a bunch of different kinds of things cobbled together that is going to ensure a future of very healthy passive income for me and that it's going to um, allow me freedom, whether it be the freedom of time and money to travel, to go to grad school and get a real job, like as a doctor or a lawyer or something, or whether it be just to, for the first time in my life, have free time. I've always worked two, three, four jobs. I want a break. And you know what, maybe I'll take a year or two where I don't do a whole lot and then realize, okay, I can't do this and I need to go back to working a nine to five. And if that's the case, that's fine. Um, I know a lot of people that retire do that, and that's okay. Um, I just want that opportunity, and I want to be able to be respected. Now, I can't say too much right now about my current job, but when I leave here, I will make a video, and I will tell you that my current job is feeding even more and giving me more and more motivation to get this going on my own. Um, and that I really need to be my own boss. Because I've been in management positions before. And the difference is this. When you're in a management position, you have the power to do what you want. But... The secret is to not take advantage of that and treat those below you as your equals. And that is something that is so difficult to find because it's so tempting to take care or to take advantage of the freedom that you're given as a manager. In the past, I've prided myself on not doing that. And as I run my business, I plan on not doing that. If I were to find a 9 to 5 where I could find a boss like me, I think I would probably stay and I'd probably be all right for a few years. But you know that doesn't seem to be what like most workplaces are. So, what's the solution? Create my own job. And by doing so, create an environment for the employees that I'll hire that will be fun, supportive, and you know, financially advantageous for them. So, this video, I've got to end right now, um, but in another three weeks, I'm going to reveal to you how this is all going to happen, because those are my reasons leading into it, but I've created an entire business plan for how this is going to happen, step by step from where I am right now to where I want to be eventually 10, 15 years down the road, and when I have, you know, hundreds of employees. So I think that I've spelled out pretty well exactly how that's going to happen. And I want you guys to hear about that. That's going to be in my next financial video in three weeks. Um, if you guys want to make sure you catch that, go ahead and hit the bell beside my name if you've already subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit um, subscribe. It'll be at the end of this video. And also there's a little watermark you can click there to subscribe. Um, I post once a week on Sundays financial video every third week. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to subscribe to, to uh, see the update to this video.